you for the Canepton introduction. So today I'm going to talk about my recent work on representation learning to model and to classify pathological speech. So I am in the lab since May 2018, so this is my fourth PRS. And since last PRS in summer, I have some publications. These are some of them. I have the paper at CIRP, which has the best paper award, my recent paper at Interspeech, my accepted paper at ICASP. We already participated last year in the uh, Interspeech hackathon, creating Alexa skills. So this is why for this presentation, an Alexa skill is going to help me during my talk. Um, today I'm going to talk to you about this recent paper submitted to speech communication about parallel representation learning for classification of pathological speech. So pathological speech processing has been focused in different diseases with different origins like patients with larynx, cancer, polyps, nodules, patients with morphological diseases like cleft lip and palate, or patients with neurological diseases like Parkinson's disease, Huntington's disease, or Alzheimer's. Clinical observations in the speech of patients can be measured and objectively analyzed with, with the aim to address two main problems. The first one is to support the diagnosis of the disease by classifying between healthy control subjects and patients. And the second one, once the patient is diagnosed, is to predict the level of degradation of the speech of the patients according to a specific clinical scale to measure intelligibility, articulation, among others. So, my main aim is that in general handcraft features extracted in the related studies may not capture enough information to characterize the presence of pathological disorders that affect different aspects of the speech production system. Classical features addressed in the literature include phonation measures regarding perturbation of the vocal fold vibration, uh, articulation measures regarding form and frequencies, different resonances in the vocal tract, prosody features regarding fundamental frequency, energy, speech rate disturbance, among others, and intelligibility measures based on the word error rate. So current trends in pathological speech modeling can be divided or divided into, into three main aspects. The first one is based on speaker models using Gaussian mixture models, I vectors, or recent X vectors. Some of these models were already used in my recent paper at, at, at ICASP. The second one is phonological features regarding the estimation and prediction of posteriors of probabilities for phonological classes like plosives, nasals, fricatives, among others. And the third one, which is the method I would like to talk to you today about representation learning strategies. It's mainly about embeddings derived from a neural network to represent pathological speech signals. Their methods are inspired mainly from the natural language processing community. So, Alexa is going to help me during this slide. Alexa, open presentation. Open presentation. Hi, what do you want to know about? Methods. We proposed a novel strategy based on unsupervised representation learning for automatic classification of pathological speech. For such a purpose, we trained recurrent and convolutional autoencoders to extract informative features to characterize the presence of speech disorders. We additionally proposed a novel feature set based on the reconstruction error of the autoencoders. We so. think this can be very good. So, thank you, Alexa. So, we propose. Stop. <laughs> so, the first case, we propose a convolutional autoencoder with the aim to map the spatial distribution of the energy which is present in a spectrogram. The input of the autoencoder is a male scale spectrogram divided with 128 filters and a time frame of 500 milliseconds. So we consider the bottleneck representation here to provide a suitable representation to reconstruct the input spectrogram. And in the second hand, 
we have a recurrent autoencoder with the aim to model the temporal evolution of uh, the spectral components that are present in a speech frame. The input is the same as in the previous case. It's a male scale spectrogram with 128 filters and a time frame of 500 milliseconds. And in this case, we consider as well the bottleneck features to represent the speech signal. From both spectrograms, we propose two different feature sets to evaluate the presence of speech disorders. The first one, as classically addressed, is the bottleneck features. But we propose an additional feature set based on the mean square reconstruction error in different frequency bands. Our main hypothesis here is that the different frequency regions in the spectrogram may be reconstructed with a different error depending on the um, speech problem that the patient has. So this mean square error in different frequency regions can be suitable to differentiate between a patient with a healthy control or uh, with a disease. So once we extract those features, we use a support, bar, a support vector machine classifier with a Gaussian kernel. Uh, we perform a tenfold cross-validation in our data, speaker independent to guarantee speaker independence in the results. For data, the autoencoders, both the convolutional and the recurrent, were trained with the SciMPS corpus. It's a database with 17 hours of radio podcast in Mexican Spanish. And for the test data, we considered two different corpora with speech problems. The first one is patients with cleft lip and palate. We have data from 135 children with repaired cleft palate and 58 healthy control subjects. The children are Colombian Spanish speakers and they pronounce isolated Spanish words. The second corpus is the Pisigita corpus. It's a database formed with 50 patients with Parkinson's disease and 50 healthy controls. And they perform different exercises like the idocokinetic task, which is the rapid repetition of syllables pataka, a red sentences, a red text, and a monologue. So re regarding the results, if we observe the reconstruction error for the convolutional autoencoder, we found in the frequency region, only have in the y-axis the mean squared error. We can have different really nice conclusions. For instance, for the case of the cleft lip and palate, we observe that the data for the healthy controls has a lower reconstruction error compared to the cleft patients, especially in the higher part of the spectrum, which may be good because, or we can evaluate that patients with cleft lip and palate, the errors that they produce are mainly present in this part of the spectrum due to the presence of civil and fricatives like S and SH. And regarding Parkinson's disease, Alexa is going to help us again. Alexa, open presentation. Hi, what do you want to know about? Results. The reconstruction error is higher for the healthy controls than for the Parkinson's patients, especially in the area inside the red square that corresponds to frequencies below 3000 Hertz. This effect could be explained because monotonicity and monoloudness, which make patients to produce speech with less variability than healthy people. These aspects make Parkinsonian speech easier to be reconstructed than healthy speech. And regarding the reconstruction error of and regarding the reconstruction error of the recurrent and regarding the reconstruction error of the recurrent autoencoder, the difference between the reconstruction between healthy controls and Parkinson patient are it's higher in this case. We observe the same effect. The reconstruction error for patients is lower than for healthy controls regarding Parkinson's disease. And for the patient with cleft lip and palate, we observe that for the higher part of the spectrum around here, where the civil and fricatives are, the reconstruction error is lower for healthy controls compared to the patients. Now, if we classify the feature extracted, in for the first case, the cleft lip and palate versus healthy controls, our model is very accurate to model the presence of the disease when the patients pronounce different isolated words, like bola, chuzo, coco, among others. 
So the, we observed that the best results were obtained with the words Chuso and Susi, which are the words that contain mostly civil fricatives like ch and s, highlighting that the nasal air emission in cleft lip and palate mainly occurs in the production of those specific phonemes. In this case, our model has an accuracy of up to 97%. As a matter of fact, we see some strange behavior here is that regarding like the bottleneck feature from the recurrent autoencoders is not that accurate compared to the other features, other extracted features. Regarding the classification of Parkinson's disease versus healthy controls, when patients also perform different speech exercises like the kinetic tasks, read sentences, read text, and monologues, we observe here that the best models were those based on read text and monologues. And this is explained because the training data used to train the autoencoders was based on radio podcasts and the red text and monologue are the most similar data to the training data. In this case, we have an accuracy of up to 88, 84% and the best, and also we have the same effect regarding the bottleneck features for the recurrent autoencoder. So for conclusion, Alexa is going to help us the last time. Open presentation. Hi. What do you want to know about? Conclusions. The reconstruction error from the autoencoders contain information suitable to classify speech disorders. Comma, we found that the error is higher for cleft patients than for healthy children, especially in the higher part of the spectrum where the sibilant fricative phonemes appear. And we found that the error for Parkinson's patients is lower than for healthy subjects, especially in the lower frequencies. And the models, the trained models are available on GitHub to evaluate or to extract features for different speech disorders. And finally, for future work, my plan is to adapt these models for the prediction of the disaster level in Parkinson's disease patient and the nasality level in cleft lip and palate subjects. Also, I would like to try this proposed approach to model other speech impairments like patients with Huntington's disease, larynx cancers, or cochlear implant users, among others. And finally, to design a specific model, design it for the, uh, the cochinetic uterans, like the rapid repetition of pataka, 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 because it's a very important task, mainly use it in to evaluate patients with neurodegenerative diseases. So this is everything from my side. Thank you.